All right. Good evening. The time is now five o'clock on November 6th. Then it is time to call the Public Com Safety Committee meeting to order. Thank you all for attending. Mr. Clark, do you need please notice attendance for the record? Yep. Thank you. All right. The first item is the agenda approval. Committee members, I know you've all had a chance to review the agenda. Um, I'd like to propose a revision at this time. I'd like to move the lottery truck discussion to a later date for consideration at this committee. Is there a second? Yes, seconded. Right. Yes. Thanks. All in, in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, at this time, we typically will take public comment. Uh, we'd like to ask whether there are any members of the public who'd like to speak to an item that's not on the agenda. Um, if you'd like to speak to an item that is on the agenda, we'd ask uh, that you go ahead and make comment at that later time. Would you like to make any public comment? Sure. Okay. I, I thought I might have a little more time like being the first 501, but okay, we can do it. Um, if, if you would come up to the microphone okay. and then just state your name and the city that you live in. Yes. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Hadley Everts. I live here in Snoqualmie, um, down by the high school. And uh, I just thought this might be the right forum, but if it's not, um, to make a comment about um, some like unsafe driving that's definitely happening between the high school and the elementary school. Um, I'm like right there on Park Street, so I can see it uh, and it makes me very nervous because there's a lot of young kids. Um, I've just noticed, you know, the, the high schoolers might get let out and I was a high schooler once, so I know that sometimes you drive a little fast when you're that age. Um, and they just kind of really take off uh, down past the elementary school. So um, I, I'm not sure if this is the right forum to ask if there's anything that can be done. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm just concerned for the kids and just there's a lot of people walking around. So thank you. And to clarify, are you speaking about uh, Snoqualmie Elementary School? Yeah, is between that yeah the high, uh, Mount Sai and Snoqualmie Elementary School, it seems like a lot of fast cars are going by. So okay, yeah, thank you so much. Of course, thank you. So any other public sure. comment? Sure. May, may I ask um, a question? Typically, we don't. I know we don't. <laughs> um, but may I have an exception? Is there a particular time of the day that might be helpful for the police chief to note? Yeah, I think it's uh, definitely around when the school is letting out. So I'm not sure if it's always at like 2.30 to 3, 4 around then. But um, And then it does kind of pick up again uh in the evening, like seven, eight. Um, I can try to keep a more of a ear to the ground on that, but yeah. That is incredibly helpful, I think. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And just, just so that you know too, the police chief is in the back of the room. He's here and he's always great about taking comment as well. And you can reach out to any of us at any time as well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I'd also like to speak to that as well. It's a, thing. it's a, it's a big challenge because I know that the same thing happens in every direction from the high school at those times. My wife runs a preschool uh, just down Beta, and uh, and the kids come flying uh, down, and they do it in the morning on their way to school and after school. So it's it's a big challenge. Um, so if we could just triple the size of our police force so that we could have people. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? Say again. Uh, my name's Ethan Benson. Nameplates. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, we usually do have nameplates. Deanna. 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 Wow. See, if you had a nameplate, I'd be able to get it right. Oh, goodness. Anyway. All right. Uh, in terms of looking uh, at who is also online, there are no other members of the public on, so we'll go ahead and move forward at this time. Uh, the next item up is the approval of the minutes stated October 16th of 2023. I so move approval of the minutes is presented. Seconded. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Moving on. The next item up is agenda bill 23-129. This is the 2024 Northeast King County Regional Public Safety Communication Agency, better known as NORCOM. Uh, the NORCOM interlocal agreement is coming back. It's an agreement to which the city is a party and it requires city council to approve the city's allocation for the NORCOM budget every year by resolution. The city's allocation for 2024 is proposed to be $63,085 
This amount reflects a 0% increase over 2023's allocation. It does, uh, the 2024 budget uh, reflects changes, including an increase of four full-time positions, as well as expenditures for a full year of service from the Puget Sound Emergency Radio Network, which is known as PCERN. Uh, but due to adding two additional agencies to, I believe there are two police agencies, um, in 2024, the associated fees um, will actually remain the same as they were last year. So at this time, we're asking that it go ahead and be moved forward to council for consideration and hopefully approval uh, by resolution. Council members, are there any questions? Any concerns about moving it forward to council? Um, would Chief would Chief Bailey be talking to us about this right now, or is it? Um... So he would be if he were available, but due to a family right. um, tragedy, he is not available to speak to it at this time. I spoke with him about it last week, and I'm happy to speak with with you and answer any questions that I can. We also have Captain Fouts available here for questions as well. Um, we've been using Norcom for our uh, fire department communications for years, and we are on the board um, in, in a leadership role there. Um, it's my understanding that we've been very happy with the service. The police do use a different one. Uh, there had previously been communications about whether it makes sense to go forward on the same one, but um, the police and fire departments have the ability to contact one another. Um, and it sounds like both departments are satisfied with their methods of communication thus far. Yeah, I guess my only question was, um, I don't remember this coming up last year. I'm sure it did. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I was just wondering how 63,000 uh, matches up with with previous years. If it is, if it, is it in the same ballpark? It is literally the same exact price as last year. So it's same ballpark. Yes. Same general. Same, yeah. same seats at the ballpark in addition. <laughs> Council Member uh, Watson. Thank day. you. <laughs> Chair Christensen, may we put this on the consent agreement, on the consent agenda, as this uh, does not change our funding? Yes. And and it's just a renewal of an existing contract. I'm comfortable with that. Council Member Benson, you agreeable? Yeah, since it's in the same general bulk part. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. In that case, um, the next item up is going to be the discussion, uh, and we will be going straight into the Issaquah Municipal Court Rate Increase discussion with Captain Lynch, Chief Lynch, excuse me. Oh, he's going to blunder on all the names today. Good afternoon. <laughs> so I wanted to give you guys a quick briefing on this. Um, this also will not change how we're doing anything in the budget, um, but some fees are going up once again. Um, it's that it's that time of year again when we, we notified of the fees going up across the board in 2024. This one particular is for what we pay for court services. We contract with the Issaquah City Municipal Court for court services. Um, it works out very well having the jail and the court all on the same system. Um, and they are, you speak to having them on Norcom and us on Issaquah jail or on the radio. Um, it also helps with the records because the court has access to our records. The dispatch center has access to our records. So it's all, um, it's all one party on this thing. Well, this, um, we're getting hit with another increase of 4.6% across the board on what they're charging per ticket to process um, and criminal charges. So, when I first got this, I was um, I was shocked because it for a non in, um, moving infraction or a traffic infraction, um, every time we write a ticket, we are being charged sixty five dollars and seventy nine cents um, to process that in the court. That's on twenty twenty four rates um, for a parking ticket that is generally twenty five dollars we are paying $44.35 to write that parking ticket. Um, oh, so, wait, are you saying that it costs us $19 to write a $25 parking ticket? It does. Yeah. Yeah. And that's if the person pays it. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
different. So in, in 2023, the rates that we're paying now was for a uh, traffic infraction was $62 and 90 cents. It's going to go up to $65 and 70 cents. Um, parking infractions were 4240. It'll be 4435. And then every time we make a criminal charge against someone, um, it's going up from $314.48 to $328.95 for them to process. Now, when I started looking at this, I'm like, well, I got to figure out how much it's going to cost us different from last year to this year. I found out that this is one of the, it's the only contract that I've found so far that we are involved in with the police department that has a flat fee. And that if we don't use up that flat fee price in a year, then we write a check at the end of the year to cover up to that flat fee. So we entered into an agreement um, prior to 2018, where we would pay $129,620 a year for all court services. So that's the use of the judge, the prosecutor, the, um, you know, having the, the court clerks process all the paperwork, issue uh, warrants, um, and no contact orders if needed. Um, so it's $129,620. That's been the same every year since prior to 2018. North Bend pays 148000 because they have more criminal cases that come through. Um, and I pulled the numbers all the way back to 2015 to let you guys know how close we've been to that 129000 So we've only reached it or went over it twice. That was in 2018 and 2019. In 2020, it starts to take a dive. We know why. Mm -hmm. um, it hit an all-time low in 2021, where we only used 71000 of the $129,000 that we were charged. Last year, we used $74,453. It's offset somewhat by the revenue. And people have this misconception that if we're out writing tickets, that we're raising the revenue for the city and that it's a, a big money draw. It is actually not. You can see how it costs us to actually write a ticket. Well, it also, we split the money from the ticket with the state and with the county. So last year, the city of Snoqualmie brought in a gross revenue from tickets and for fines for criminal activity at $68,064. Of that, the state got $30,015. The county got $603. From, I haven't been able to find out what that goes to or why, but they had their hand in there for $603. And we were able to take in $37,446 of the $68,000. Now that money goes to bringing down the, the price that we have to pay for the 129 each year. Um, so this 4.6% was less than last year. I, I found a letter from last year where it was sent, where it was a 6% raise. Of, of these prices. Um, this is a 4.6% for um, 2024. So the $129,620 is the bottom line. We were not close to that and we will not be close to going over it. We're going to probably be a little bit ahead of, of our activity from last year. It has gone up each year since 2021. And I expect it as we get more officers on the road more activity, more people under arrest. The new drug laws will start eating into the amount of money that we have to whittle down each year for the court. Um, so I, I expect those to go up. But I wanted to give you the briefing. A lot of people don't understand that, like I can tell from your face, the parking ticket is, it's a pain to write a parking ticket for us because it costs us so much money. Mm -hmm. But we do it when we need to. and. We try to mitigate those by, you know, having people come pick their vehicles up first before we do that. Councilmember Benson. So if I just want to understand this, if people stop doing crime in Snoqualmie, if, 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 you know, if you get everything that you're, that you're after, which is no more crime in Snoqualmie, it's going to cost us $130,000 regardless. Mm -hmm. 
to to pay to the the municipal courts. Yeah, because we do court. not have our own court. We do not have a judge. We do not have a, a um, prosecutor system. We don't have the clerks. Um, we don't have their records. Uh, that's what we're contracting for. Councilor Washington, do you have any comments? Um, I do. The um, You mentioned the parking, and it seems like there's quite a bit of disparity between what it costs us and, and the reward back to the city, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, would, would it even be imaginable to increase the parking fine? Or is it so insignificant anyway it doesn't even factor in. Um, I have experience in other agencies where we have changed the city ordinance to where the if we used a city ordinance parking fine instead of the RCW parking, um, it was $100 for the, the fine on that. I think that was a little outrageous. So I think maybe finding the happy medium might be something we could look into. Um, but the state sets the RCW rates. We can't change those. So, okay. yeah. Right. Thank you. Councilor Benson. It seems like we would make more money if the police just left friendly notes reminding people about the parking laws. I mean, we're losing money. We're losing money to, to write a parking ticket. It costs us money to write a parking ticket. Um. We're already paying it anyway on the flat fee and the more parking tickets we we issue or the more speeding tickets we issue it whittles away that money that we are trying to spend that we're already spending that's the way that i've kind of had to wrap my head around it for the last couple of weeks in looking at this um that 129 isn't going to change why why aren't we why aren't we negotiating for a lower number if if we're not if we're not if we don't have that much crime happening in Snoqualmie, why are we, why are we contracting for, for that much in services? Why aren't we contracting for seventy five thousand and then paying for whatever I we go over? Up. I asked them, and if you look back at the amount of money that we were, um, that we were for the filing fees in twenty eighteen, we did one hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars worth of filing fees. Um, in 20, that was in 2018 and 2019, 132,000. Those were the years that we went over the 129. Um, I foresee us getting back to being either close or over probably within the next couple of years. When we have full staff and officers that are out being proactive again, um, if we are trying to, we just figured out a long-term confinement issue that we were having, um, which, by the way, on Friday, Sunnyside's coming to pick up our first person. So it's good. Yes. Um, that will open up additional beds at the Issaquah jail that we can start booking people in and not just giving a ticket and letting them go. It goes to warrant. We end up spending more money that way. Um, I would caution us to to change right now um, with the 129000 because I think we'll probably be over it here pretty soon. So, so it sounds like what you're saying is that right now we aren't putting as many people in jail as we really need to be. We are not because um, the jail prices are so high. Remember, I issued the directive of it's a mandatory booking only right now without prior approval from, from me. So if it's not a mandatory, if it's not a DUI that is a mandatory, if it's not a domestic violence assault that's mandatory, for the most part, we are giving a ticket and giving a court date. But why are we doing that if we have fifty thousand dollars in unused funds that we've already contracted for? When we give the ticket, that's still going to the the mm -hmm. one hundred and twenty nine thousand. That's just to process the ticket, right? So we're not booking people. Because so the incarceration the doesn't count toward that at all. Not okay. All right. No, we're paying on top of that. Okay. Yeah. So in order to keep those prices from skyrocketing, we're looking at op other options and not booking everybody. Okay. Anything further? Fascinating subject. Oh, it is. 
Yeah, it's very interesting to hear exactly how it's it's structured. And yeah. I was very surprised to hear how much of the funds yeah. of the tickets that, that we write and eventually collect on go to other sources. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, thanks. Thank you. Uh, you are actually up next again with the <laughs> staffing update. Not that. Sure. So the Chief Lynch. Staffing? Mm -hmm. this, this is my hot topic. I love talking about staffing. Um, in Towards the end of June, we had six spots that needed to be filled. Um, and those had been open for quite some time. Um, with the help of human resources here at City Hall, um, with assigning an officer to be our recruitment officer and going to public safety testing events, um, we were able to stock the pond of, of highly qualified candidates. And I know I've spoken to you guys about that before, um, but we have been able to hire right now in the last four months, five officer candidates. Um, one lateral, one returned. So the rest of them have been entry level, which leaves us with one more spot. So we have a guy that um, just passed his background. And this was the first background that was been done from our in-house detective also. So we did not have to um, outsource that and pay for an outside agency to do the background. Um, he was able to do that within two weeks. And if we're sending him off to public safety testing, we're waiting a month if we pay the exorbitant amount for an expedited two months, if we don't. So we did it in two weeks. Um, so th the seventh and eighth, he has his psych test and his medical. And if everything goes well, I'll be presenting sometime probably next week to the mayor. Um, so I told you guys before that I, I imposed a by the end of the year goal for myself to get this done. And we have worked very hard. Um, we have an officer that is graduating next Tuesday from the academy. Um, I've got uh, one that is in training right now on the road with a field training officer that will start his next rotation when he comes back from his days off. We'll start a shadow phase, which means he's in his car by himself and his field training officer follows him to calls and goes with him on traffic stops, but he's not in the car. So it's his first taste of being solo. So that'll happen next week. And then that's one week, one rotation. And then when he comes back, um, he will be on solo. He will actually take a position on the schedule. So when that happens, three out of our four squads will have three officers and a sergeant. They're slotted for four, argent, four officers and a sergeant. Um, so three of them will have three officers and a sergeant. One of them will still have two officers and a sergeant. So help is on the way. And I'm pretty excited. The, the guys that we're, we're hiring are high quality. Um, they're super excited. One of them started um, earlier this month, Max Bostic. So he's hanging out at the station with us and learning laws and reading policies. And um, he's actually uh, been tasked to write the police blotter. So when you read that, that's coming from him. And it helps him with reputation or repetition going through the um, the in-house Spillman system, you know, reading the reports, seeing how the officers read them. So it's up to him to pull the cases out that we want to let people know about. So he did his first one today. Um, so he's pretty excited about that. Um, we have a, a, the one that we just hired last week. We'll start on the 27th of this month. And then we have a third one. It is active duty in the Army right now. And then once he gets out in the beginning of December, he will start on the 18th of December. Um, and all three of them, their names have been put to the academy. They're on the clock to go. It's already been moved up for two of them from April to um, early March. So hopefully it keeps moving up and we can get them in by first of the year sometime. So that's my staffing update. Thank you. That's excellent. Yes. And uh, we're we're a couple of months into the school year. How's our new school resource officer doing? Oh, so I got an email on, and this would embarrass him if I told you guys, but I'm going to do it anyway. I got an email from the principal of the high school on Friday, and it was his email that he had sent out to a couple of people at the school regarding an assault, and he was doing an investigation. She forwarded that and said, I absolutely love this man. Thank you so much for sending him. It couldn't be going any better. So, and then I saw her Friday night at the football game and she came up and gave me a big hug. She's like, thank you so much. It is going awesome. He's loving it. He's taking it, the ownership of that position. Um, it's one of the one things on my plate that I don't have to worry about on a daily basis. So I totally trust him and, you know, 
sitting there talking to him at the games, students are coming up high five and what's up, <laughs> Dave, officer Dave. And yeah, he's got relationships going already. That's fantastic. Yep. All right, good. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anything further? All right. In that case, we are at the end of our agenda. I'll check one last time. Um, talked about, do you know if Bill Wisham wanted to comment on anything? I see that he's in attendance. Uh, is he on the team? Yeah. I don't know if he did. You might check with Mike and Dexter. Okay. I can ask as well. Um, Firefighter Wisham, did you have anything that you wanted to speak to? If so, you can raise your hand. Thanks. I'm all good here. Thank you very much for asking. I appreciate it. All right. In that case, having nothing further, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you.